I have done some service to humanity, I suppose, and yet the greatest disservice to my own soul. The interests of science ever beckon us past what we know we ought to do, and always onward to what we know should be left alone. My personal considerations aside, this project, which has occupied me for over a decade, has been duly terminated. My own misgivings concerning the delicate ethical balance of this science have been published, debated, applauded, condemned, censored, and ultimately tossed aside. Consider this a confession, a confession that no God-fearing priest could ever bear to hear. The pedestal of our art is polished with our own flesh and blood. I have given both for a cause I have since questioned in its integrity. And there she was, right there on paper. There was the language that spelled out Jenny. I could not wait to finally meet her, in person, in the flesh. From the moment of her artificial conception, to her day of birth, through the first three years of her young and untested life, there was never in history a more complete and intimate record of a human life. Watching Jenny grow up, I was immediately confronted by the peculiar obsessiveness with which humanity grapples with its sense of self. We are so preoccupied by this sense of origin, of birthright, of place. And here Jenny had none of these things, and thus it was assumed she would have some trouble coming to terms with the ontology of her existence. For a being with only an artificial mode of creation, of all the people I have known, Jenny had the most authentic sense of who she was. Jenny's reaction to the knowledge that I had donated much of my DNA to her design was not what I would have expected. She showed no outward signs of surprise, looked at me and said, quite simply, Daddy. Jenny was my daughter in a purely biological sense, and yet Jenny's very existence was a crime. The last summer of Jenny's life with me was something of an inevitability. Genesis Laboratories had, until recently, done a well enough job of keeping the United States government unaware of our human trials. Of the 13 Genesis children, only five survived. Three were lost during implantation, the fourth miscarried. It was the fifth embryo, Genesis 5, Jenny, that survived to maturation. By her third birthday, a probe launched by the Division of Homeland Security had already traced large sums of money entering the United States from abroad. Then I received a memo that said, very simply, that, that I was to take Jenny somewhere and dispose of her body in a way that would eliminate all evidence of her ever being born. I did what I was asked. I covered it up for the company. I cleaned up their mess. I destroyed the evidence. You'll never find Jenny again. How does one measure the cost of a human life? If we only looked at what we were made of and not at what we have done, then the cost could only be measured in the weight of flesh and blood. So what we do in life is equally real. To create life will always be the highest invocation of a right to exist, and Jenny intrinsically had this right. It is not our origins that define us, nor is it how, where, or when we died, but rather why we lived. I could tell Jenny why she was born, but I could never tell her why she needed to exist. That, my dear witness, is the only thread that binds every human life in this world. Thank you.